Well, good morning, everyone. Um, this week has really been hurtful to me. As I, as I was going through and uh, putting the sermon together, I, I, I so love Jeremiah. And I, and I know at, at seminary, so many people were like, oh, I, I don't like to read out of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is so tough. He's not tough. I know so many people that would not preach out of Jeremiah, uh, and, and that's unfortunate because, they, they, matter of fact, they don't even preach out of the Old Testament. They're so frightened of seeing the gospel in the Old Testament. But there it is. It, it's, it's right there in front of us every single time. It's seeing Christ in the Old Testament is where it is. So out of this reading, this comes this one saying that's only found two times in the Bible. Once in Nehemiah and once in, in Jeremiah's reading. And if you open up your Bibles, you can to 659, 660. And it has this reading here that says, The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. What does that say to you? Have you ever been taught in that? I was going to for this weekend, but I, I figured our crowd would know it. Do you remember that yellow disc that went in the middle of a 45 record? I was going to bring that in. and There will only be two of you here that would be like, well, I remember seeing that, but I really did, never had the, the luxury of it. But the rest of us would know what that thing is. And that's the problem with this reading. Is it's a reading of its time, and it was... And for those that grew up later on, wouldn't understand it. Just like you wouldn't understand that disc. You guys would be like, what's a record and what's a record player, right? I mean, I've always had a CD player. Um, but that little disc is, is, is amazing. When you go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, which you have to do, it's, it's got to be on your bucket list. That is my favorite place uh, besides Disney World. And I go in there and sit in the blues section and just go through all... Uh, Howlin' Wolf and, and stuff like that all day long. I mean, I just I love the blues and I love the blues section on how it added to rock and roll. But in their, in their gift shop, they have this t-shirt that has the disc on it for a 45. It says, if you don't know what this is, you don't belong at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I thought, wow, how apropos, you know. Um, Eugene Peterson, who translated the Bible in, in a very, very contemporary language, had put it this way. He had translated to, the parents ate green apples and the children got the stomach ache. That's what that meaning, that, that writing means. Where the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth were set on edge. In, in the past, when Jeremiah, remember the, the first covenant of God was, you as my people I am going to save. As a whole. So if let's say just this section over here was bad, all of us were going to pay. And that's what happened in First Temple, in the end of First Temple Judaism. That one section of bad people made it so the rest of us all had to go in exile. We were a collective whole. And now God says, I'm going to make a new covenant with you. As Jeremiah reads, he says, now I'm going to do it this way, is that your salvation is based on your actions and your actions only. No longer is it about what your parents did or your grandparents did. Our salvation only. Does everybody understand that? We, we, we sort of get a glimpse, a glimpse of that as Christians because we understand I as, as myself need to accept Christ into my life so that he becomes my master and that's my salvation and that salvation is based on a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the risen Lord Jesus Christ. That's what is in Jeremiah. But the problem runs into is this, is that all of us as parents, all of us as elders, all of us as leaders within the church, we have a certain element now that hits in our heart that we have to look at and say, how am I, as the elder of this church, or how are you, as parents, going to be held in regard for what you do? Because, in reality, if we don't teach our children correctly, if we don't teach our parishioners correctly, we're held to a higher accord by God. So, the salvation part is a one-on-one, -on -one, but then the God says, but at the same time, you're going to be held in regard for that one-on-one -on, -one on what you do to my people. 
Are you going to teach them right? Now, I want to read to you from a newsletter that I got, and it comes in my junk mail because I put it as junk mail. But it came in my junk mail, and this came out of this state. It's, he, he calls it creeping conditionalism. In his preaching, what I mean by creeping conditionalism, he says, can be best evidenced by the statement like, God loves you, but only if. And there is where a quid pod quo in the grace of the cross of Jesus Christ. I don't wish to be unfair to Billy Graham, he talks about. And maybe I misunderstand him, but nonetheless, it is in the effect of me. So I thought that the Christian faith is about being good. He thought was about being good as a Christian. So he's dropped that altogether. Now he goes into the point of saying, but the gospel of Jesus isn't about being good. Here's a leader in a national church spewing this. When you meet the risen Lord Jesus Christ, you're crud. You're crud before you meet the Lord Jesus. And once you accept the Lord, there's a change that has to happen. Once you see his wounds, once you touch his blood, once you put your finger in his wounds, there has to be a change that happens to you. Has to be. Now, what, what this is saying here is cheap grace. Do whatever you're doing, it's fine, God will forgive you. That's called cheap grace. I had a seminary professor for a year and a half that preach this all the time, and I'm sitting there going, what about all the other readings within Scripture? So what you're doing is you're relying on that the grace is open to all, which is true, John 3.16. I mean, what does it say? For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son to save the world, not just the select few. So there's an element of truth in His cheap grace. But then you get somebody like Paul right here in, in Galatians 5. And this is where I was, I was going through saying, well, Timothy is right on here saying that Scripture is there to, to reproof, to correct. It doesn't say that you're supposed to correct Scripture by this type of writing saying that do whatever you want, because that's rewriting Scripture, isn't it? That's cheap grace. But what Paul says here in Galatians 5, he says, For freedom of Christ is set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. The yoke of slavery he's talking about is your old ways. So he goes into, if I keep going down here, he said, But I say, walk by the Spirit so that you will, you will not gratify in the desires of the flesh. For the desires of flesh are against the spirit. The desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For those are opposed to each other and keep you from doing the things that you want to do. It's like we have our right foot is in our salvation and our left foot is on the earth. We straddle this trench in the, in the uh, what do we call it at seminary? The already and the not. The already and the not yet. <clears throat> We straddle this trench. We know we're saved. We're waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. But in the meantime, we have to deal with the world. So we straddle that trench. And the only thing that can get across that trench is the cross of Jesus Christ. And the more in life that you say, Jesus, I can't carry this load. And he says, okay, I'm going to take a little bit more off. By the time you get to that trench, you've got nothing to cross over that trench with. Nothing to cross over that trench with. You've so cut yourself out. So, so he goes into this whole thing here. Envy, drunk, drunkenness, things that I warn you are, I warned you before that these are who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. He's warning people against cheap grace. He's warning people to say, do whatever you want, God will save you. No, if you really meet the Lord Jesus Christ, you're changed. You are going to be that good person. You're not going to be, well, just whatever it is. Hey, that's cool. I accept Jesus. Okay, now I can do whatever I want. That's not what it's about. That's stupid. Anybody who is a leader of a church has just given in to tickling ears in a parish somewhere. Somebody who espews this type of cheap grace has just given in to Satan. 
Because it is not about just Jesus saving us. That's the easy part on His part. Now it comes to a transformation that has to happen within us. The eyes of our heart, according to Ephesians, have to be opened. We have to see that path between our heart and our head, which is the longest road in our body for some reason, to say, you know what? I see a person lying in a ditch. I'm going to go to help them out. I see somebody in need. I'm going to help them out. I'm not going to talk about other people. As St. Augustine wrote in his walls, and we need somebody with calligraphy, uh, you know, ability to write up, write up on top here to say, I will speak no evil of anyone here. That's the sign of a true saint. To have thick skin. So that when somebody talks about it, they're like, meh, whatever. I got Jesus on my side and I'll pray for you. So that they're transformed. Yeah, it hurts. But that's not what the gospel's about. That's not what grace is about. Grace should never be so trivialized to say, do whatever you want, don't be good. It should never be trivialized to that. Is that how precious Jesus' blood is? Is to go into and say that we call it creeping conditionalism? It's called a transformation of the heart, of the mind, of the soul, of the strength. That we love the Lord our God with everything we have. And at the same time, take that love of God and turn it over to somebody else. And say, I love you no matter how you come to me. I'm going to love you like Jesus loved you. That, if you want to call it creeping conditionalism, good for you. But the rest of us call that being a real Christian, being a saint of the church. Billy Graham is not wrong. He is spot on when he talked about this. But these other people that get out as leaders, they have given in to Satan and allowed tickling ears to dictate how they preach the gospel. And it's unfortunate that now people are going to read this garbage and believe it. And you know what? Jesus is going to say to them, what happened to the poor? Did you give them? Did you try to change after you met me on that road? To a mass. Did you do anything? Well, no, I was told by this bishop or this clergy, uh, you know, you died for me and I could just do whatever I want, that you were going to forgive me in the end. Where is that in my scripture? It's not anywhere. And Jesus is going to say, listen, <laughs> you got a lot of remedial work we need to do with you. And then to those leaders that spew this garbage, Oh, you're going to be with the goats. I can guarantee it right now. I can guarantee it right now. Because it's, it says in Scripture that you as leaders are going to be held to higher regard. So you as parents, as leaders within the community, as you go out, how are you showing Jesus Christ? Why do you come to church? Do you come to church that this is the one place you're holy? Or do you come here to get revitalized as to what you already do all week long? What you know, according to this, the way that they wrote it, what you know is going to get you into heaven. What you know is going to be the good enough for you. I'm telling you right now, unless you know this, you don't know anything. All you know is how to put the keys in the ignition. You have not studied your owner's manual at all. You have not studied your owner's manual. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't know this enough right yet, your check engine light's on. Break it out. If you don't have a Bible, take one out of the pew. That's what they're there for. Take it home. Read the Word of God and know who He is and know about His loving grace. But once you meet Him, you will not be a creeping conditionalism. It is called God's love that's going to transform you into something more than you were before. And that's a problem because we as parents... We, we have many parents out there who turned off to God, turned off to the church, and they don't bring their kids to church. Well, that's not fair to the kids because you tried to learn on your own, and you failed, and you don't like church. So now you're going to tell your kids that church is no good? God's no good? That's tickling ears. You've given in to the tickling of ears. So this week, as you go through, look around. Look around to those who are leaders within the church, and you need to call them out. You need to stand up to them and say, you're wrong. 
and it's unfortunate because you're wrong, you're going to bring people down to hell with you. Pray for them. And know the Word of God. Know the Word of God. Because everything that you've learned will just get you by in the earth. This will get you by for eternity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.